Okay, welcome to the next clip on chapter 3. Yeah? So we have in chapter 3 so far we have completed yeah, uh, three key concepts. The first one is to derive the statement of cash flows. The second is to look at the uh, uh, various uh, standardization methods of financial statement. Yeah? That's the second key concept. And the third is uh, to look at the ratio analysis. Yeah. Okay, we have finished that. Now we move on to the fourth uh, key concept, which is the DuPont uh, analysis yeah, or DuPont identity. So the DuPont identity is based on uh, this ratio here, okay, which is ROE, yeah, return on equity. We know that return on equity is net income divided by equity. Yeah? But we can expand this. Yeah? How do we expand this? Uh, let me just get that. So this uh, net income over equity can be uh, expanded to two components. Yeah? There's only one component here. We expand it to two. So we have the numerator here, net income is here. And equity, the denominator is here. Yeah? And both yeah? here, we divide by total assets and we multiply by total assets. Therefore, we do not change the ratio. Yeah? We just expand the ratio. Therefore, we have two ratios here. Yeah? Uh, we started with one ratio here, now we have two ratios. Okay, net income over total assets and total assets over equity. Yeah? And we are familiar with these ratios yeah? because net income over total assets is actually ROA. Okay, ROA. Yeah? And uh, total assets over equity is called equity multiplier. Yeah? So this is actually a, a, this is a profitability ratio. But we expand this profitability ratio, we get two other ratios here, which is ROA, which is also a profitability ratio. And then we have equity multiplier, which is a leverage ratio. Yeah? Then we can expand this, uh, we can say that ROE is equals to these two components, ROA multiplied by the equity multiplier. Yeah? Now, we can expand this further, yeah? net income over total assets, okay, which is this, yeah, this can be expanded. You have net income here and you have total assets here and you multiply with sales and also divide by sales. Yeah? So here you have two components, yeah? one ratio expanded to two ratios here. Yeah? So net income over sales is actually net profit margin or the book calls this the profit margin, yeah? PM. I prefer using net, uh, net profit margin. Yeah? So this is net profit margin. And the second component uh, ratio is sales divided by total assets. Yeah? Now this is uh, total asset turnover. Total asset turnover, yeah? so TATO. So it is net profit margin multiplied by total asset turnover. Therefore, ROA is actually net profit margin multiplied by total asset turnover. So we can say that, okay, uh, you won't be able to see, let me just uh, bring this down a little bit, okay, yeah, now therefore ROE is actually net profit margin multiplied by TATO, which is ROA here, then multiplied by uh, the equity multiplier, therefore return on equity, and yeah, this is the shareholder return, okay, will depend on three factors. Yeah? One is NPM or net profit margin. This is the cost efficiency. All right? Total asset turnover is the asset efficiency, how efficiently the company is using its asset. And the third will be uh, leverage yeah? or equity multipliers leverage, how much debt the company uses. Yeah? So these are the three factors that influence yeah? ROE. So this equation yeah, is called the DuPont identity. Yeah? ROE is equals to net profit margin multiplied by total asset turnover multiplied by equity multiplier is called the DuPont identity. Yeah? So this uh, method yeah, of uh, breaking yeah, ROE into three components is called the DuPont analysis yeah? as you will see later. Okay, let me uh, go to the next slide. Okay, yeah. So here you can see uh, is the same DuPont identity here. So the first component K 
okay, for ROE is profit margin, yeah, is a measure of the firm's operating efficiency, how well it controls the cost, yeah, the firm controls the cost. The second component of less at turnover is a measure of the firm's asset use efficiency, how efficiently the company uses its asset, yeah, <laughs> all right. Uh, and the third component, equity multiplier, is a measure of the firm's financial leverage, yeah. So all things being equal, higher the profit margin, meaning better the firm controls its costs, then higher will be the return on equity. Yeah? If this is higher, then this will be higher, yeah? because these are all directly related yeah? and positively related. The second component means higher the TAT or a total asset turnover, higher will be the ROE, yeah? and vice versa, lower the TAT lower would be the ROE. Yeah? So what does that mean? It means that if the company uses its assets efficiently, then the return on equity, other things being equal, the return on equity will be higher. Yeah? Likewise here, the third component is the measure of uh, financial leverage. That means the amount of debt or borrowing yeah, that the company uses. If the company uses more debt, then EM will become higher. Yeah? So higher EM or equity multiplier, higher will be the ROE. So that's the relationship. Yeah? So how does a company uh, increase its uh, shareholder return? There are three ways of doing this. Yeah? Three means of doing this. One is to control the cost. The second is to use the assets efficiently. And the third is to use debt, yeah? more debt. Okay, of course, you cannot keep using a lot of that yeah, because there will be a trade-off. Yeah, and we'll see that a bit later. Yeah, but this is the general relationship in the DuPont identity. All right, now let's try and um, apply this. Yeah, uh, when comparing two companies, okay, you have two companies here. One is Yahoo, the other is Alphabet, and they both are competitors in the same industry. Yeah, all right. Now you're given the ROE, the profit margin, to less that turnover, and the equity multiplier. So this is actually a breakdown of the ROE. Yeah? So let's look at the profit margin first. Yeah? Now note that this is a comparison between two companies, Yahoo and Alphabet. But at the same time, it also gives you the change over the years, yeah? 2013 to 2015. So it is both a peer analysis, that means you com uh, compare with a competitor, okay? but at the same time it also looks at the performance over time. Yeah? So it's like a time series as well, yeah? trend analysis and also a peer analysis. Okay, yeah? let's uh, look at the profit margin first. Yeah? Look at the profit margin for Yahoo. You find that in the most recent year it's negative 87.5. Yeah? Means Yahoo had a loss, yeah, huge loss uh, in 2015. But in 2013, it had 29.2%, which is rather high. Okay, compared to Alphabet, yeah, Alphabet, the profit is more or less uh, the same. Yeah, profit margin is more or less the same, which is about 21%. Uh, yeah, here it is closer to 21, and then uh, in this year, it's closer to 22. Yeah, so. What can you say about the profit margin? Yeah, first, okay, yeah, we are looking at Alphabet's position compared to Yahoo's position. Yeah? So we want to talk about Alphabet in relation to Yahoo. Yeah? So first we say that Alphabet has lower and more stable relative operating costs. Why is that? Because the profit yeah, on average is higher than this. Yeah? Here, in this year, it's very high, but these two years, it is very low. Yeah? This is lower, and this is very low. There is a loss yeah, for Yahoo. But for Alphabet, it is more or less stable. Yeah? So it's stable, and it is relatively higher. Yeah? The profit margin is higher. When the profit margin is higher, then the operating costs are relatively lower. When we say relative, relative to the amount of sales made. Yeah? The operating costs relative to the sales. Yeah? Alright, so in that term, you can say Alphabet is better than Yahoo yeah, in terms of profitability, yeah, in, in terms of managing the operating costs. Okay, then let's look at the total asset turnover. 
Yeah, what do you see here? Yeah, you find that here the total asset turnover is very low. Yeah, this year it's very low, zero point zero seven five. Yeah, it means that Yahoo has a lot of assets but not much sales. Yeah, in relative terms. Yeah, the sales are lower compared to the assets. But here you find that the total asset turnover for for Alphabet yeah, is about zero point five. Yeah, no doubt there is a decline. Okay. 0.539 it declines to 0.509 but here okay compared to yahoo yeah, yahoo is worse off yeah, much worse off it is lower to start with and then it uh, went down very low then it went up slightly yeah so what can you say you can say that alphabet uh, has much lower relative use of assets yeah it has much lower yeah, relative use of assets why is that? Because for every uh, asset used, yeah, they generate more sales. Here, they use assets, but they generate less sales. Therefore, uh, Alphabet is better in managing, yeah, They're better in terms of efficiency in using the assets. All right. So that's the second point. Yeah? So when by looking at the profit margin, okay, we can uh, infer about operating costs. Yeah. By looking at the total asset turnover of these two companies, we can infer about the uh, use of assets, how efficiently yeah, uh, these companies uh, compare to one another, how these uh, companies are using the assets yeah, in terms of efficiency. Next, yeah, because they use uh, Alphabet uses relatively low assets, yeah, less assets, therefore we, we can infer that they use uh, less financing they need they need less financing yeah? because the uh, assets are lower so when assets are lower the liability and equity which is the financing yeah, will also be relatively lower yeah? here when we say relative so relative to sales yeah, the assets here also yeah relative to uh, the sales the financing need yeah is much lower for alphabet compared to uh, yahoo Okay, then these two, yeah, these two points, okay, uh, these two points, yeah, these two points are inferred from this total asset turnover when you compare the total asset turnover of Alphabet compared to Yahoo. Yeah? Now, that, then let's look at the equity multiplier. What do you see? Yeah? You find that the equity multiplier for Yahoo is much higher. Okay. And you find that it has been going up, yeah, one two nine. It went up to one five nine, one point five nine. Then it went down slightly to one point five six. So it's higher than alphabet, and it has uh, gone up, yeah. But here you find that it has gone down. It is lower, and it has gone down. Alphabet. So what can you say? Alphabet is using less debt, okay? But yeah, alphabet uses lower relative debt use. Yeah, that means debt. Uh, relative here means relative to the amount of assets used. Yeah? So uh, the company uses less uh, borrowing yeah, to purchase assets compared to Yahoo. Yeah? Yahoo uses more debt yeah? in relative terms. Yeah? Relative here means refers to the assets. Yeah? So what can you say for that? So, so higher relative when you use less debt, then Alphabet will have to use more equity. Yeah? When you use more equity, but here your profit, yeah, generally per sales is higher. Okay, what happens finally? Yeah, higher return on equity. Yeah, because you find this. Yeah, Yahoo has lower. Yeah, ten percent, then zero point four percent, then negative fifteen percent. Yeah, compared to this, it's quite stable. Fourteen point eight, it went down, but then the last two years it has been quite stable. Yeah, much higher than. Uh, the ROE of Yahoo. Yeah? So what can we conclude? We can conclude that Alphabet had higher and more stable return on shareholders investment due to two things. Yeah? One is lower and more stable relative operating costs and far lower and stable relative use of assets. Yeah? And so the financing of assets was also relatively much lower. Yeah? Even though the company uses less debt. Yeah? Less debt will uh, reduce the ROE but because these two points okay, these two factors uh, 
appreciate yeah, or increase the alphabet's ROE. This one reduces, but overall, this is higher. Okay, so that's